Hi, I'm Nick Ray from Fandroid, and this here is Google's discontinued Project Aura smartphone. Since we showed off the device a couple days ago for the first time, we've received a lot of questions from you guys. So today, we'll be answering as many as we can. Let's get started. The first and probably the most popular question that we received was how we got our hands on the device. Unfortunately, we don't want to burn our source, so we will not be revealing that information. We don't want to put people's jobs in jeopardy. Next up was when is Aura coming to market? Unfortunately, if you didn't already hear, Google canceled Project Aura a couple months ago, so there will be no modular device from Google in the near or even distant future. A lot of you also wanted to know why Project Aura was canceled in the first place. Unfortunately, our source was not privy to any of that information. The good news is a lot of the employees that worked on Project Aura at Google are now working at Facebook, so the DNA of the project may live on in something from Facebook in the future. You guys also wanted to know the specifications. The device we have has a 5.5 inch 1080p display. On the inside there's a Snapdragon 810 processor with 3 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of internal storage. On the front you'll also find a 5 megapixel camera and a speaker right at the bottom. On the back you get a 2.1 megapixel camera and both of those cameras have fixed focus lenses. And on the bottom you have a USB Type-C charging and sync port. The battery in the device is a mix between internal and external batteries, amounting to 3,450 milliamps. The next question is, does the phone work, and what version of Android is it running on? Well, here you go. The phone is functional, and it's actually running on Android 7.0, with a special version denoted as NMR1, and it has August 5th's security patch installed on it as well. Since this is a development unit, a lot of people were wondering if it can be used as a daily driver. The answer is yes and no. It all depends on if you want mobile data or not, since we actually don't have access to the SIM card slot. We're assuming that the SIM card slot is somewhere behind the back panel and the removable battery, but unfortunately that battery is stuck in place and cannot be removed. So if you need data, no you can't, but if you don't mind using it simply as a tablet or an extra device alongside your main device it can definitely be used as a daily driver. With everyone's fascination with having the latest and greatest smartphone, quite a few of you were wondering if the CPU inside the phone can be swapped out. Unfortunately, it cannot. The CPU is built into the endoskeleton of the phone, which includes the display as well. One of the most amusing questions we got was how much money we would accept for the phone. Unfortunately, this device is not ours and it's currently not for sale. That doesn't mean that the owner will not be putting it up for sale sometime in the future. Next up is how is battery life on the Aura? Unfortunately, it's quite disappointing. Even though it has 3,450 milliamps to use, it typically can't make it through a full day. So far, we've been able to get eight to 10 hours on a single charge with roughly two hours of screen on time. Is Aura the future of smartphones or is it just a gimmick? Unfortunately, Aura is not the future of smartphones. Since the project's been discontinued, something like this will not be coming to market anytime soon. The good news is we do have modular phones on the market already from LG and even Motorola. We'll just have to wait and see if they actually amount to anything. Of course a lot of you were interested in how the module swapping mechanism works. You simply press the button on the side of the phone which pulls up a menu. You select which module you want to remove and then you receive a message that says to turn the phone over for it to be released. And there you go. So why the switch from a slide out to a pop out module mechanism? Google revealed a while back that the slide out mechanism that they had in place couldn't hold its own during testing. The new pop out mechanism allows for a much larger electromagnet, which is definitely a lot stronger than the previous iteration. So what do those modules look like? They actually come in two different sizes, a single which is a rectangle and a double which is a square. On the outside they've been covered in soft touch plastic, but on the inside they've either been aluminum or plastic as well. You'll find the connection pins on one end on the back side and then a slot for the electromagnet on the other. Everyone's also been interested in what modules we actually have on the phone. Unfortunately the only working module is the camera. Everything else are simply dummy test units that can only be removed and then added back to the phone, but they don't serve any actual functionality. 
You guys have also been interested in knowing if the modules can be used in any of the available slots on the back of the phone. The answer is yes, but developers can actually give preference to a specific position. Case in point, the camera right here. If you turn the phone on with the module in a different slot, it actually asks you to move it for optimal positioning right here in the left hand corner. You guys were also wondering how many modules Google was planning to build for Project Ara. Unfortunately, we do not have the answer to that. Based on the promo videos that Google released, the library would have been extensive, but it's impossible to know since the project was canceled. Last but not least, is the phone as thick as it looks? We say it is. To give you an idea, this is it next to the new Huawei Mate 9 that was released last week. The footprint is a lot smaller than the Huawei phone, but the thickness simply makes it feel like a brick in your hand. And that's it for our Project Ara Q&A. If I didn't get around to answering your question, feel free to drop it in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them individually. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to the Fandroid YouTube channel.